We use the Makita 18 volt brushless barrel grip jigsaw. Then we let you know what we think about it. Stick around. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. This is the Makita XVJ01Z and it's their 18 volt brushless barrel grip jigsaw. Now yes, they have a D-handle jigsaw as well and they have it in the brushless technology as well. Uh, but this is the barrel grip and many people like one or the other and a lot of other people have a barrel grip and a D-handle. I tend to like the barrel grip. But let's quit talking. Let's actually go over the features of the XVJ01Z and then we'll use it and then we'll come back and wrap it up. This is the Makita XVJ01Z and it is their 18 volt barrel grip brushless jigsaw. Now I like this jigsaw. I like a barrel grip. Many other people like a D handle and Makita has basically the same brushless jigsaw in a D handle as well. But I like the barrel grip style. I like the fact that it's also somewhat ambidextrous, if you will, because we have a button over here. And by the way, on these jigsaws and, and on these cordless tools, typically you'll have a button that arms it and then a power button. That's what you have here. Basically you have to hit that first. You'll see the light come on and then you hit your power button and that calls the tool on. So that's what you have here on both sides of the tool. You have the arming button or the lock button, whatever you want to call that. Press that first, then the power button. See, I can push it again, and now if I hit the power button, I get no power. But I have that on both sides. So I can either put that, you know, push that with my index finger or my thumb, or again, I can use this left handed as well. But there's no way that, you know, I'm not going to be able to push that button uh, with some type of finger. Uh, also, one thing I like ab about a barrel grip are those si situations when you're going from the bottom side. Now, people know when they're doing finish work, when they're doing coping and things like that, you want to hold the saw like this and make your cuts. And so that makes it very nice to be able to hold that tool very easily. I don't have to pull a trigger or anything like that. Once I arm it and power it up, I can hold it like this and, and cut from the underside. Uh, do coping or whatever it is I need to do. So again, that's one of the reasons I really like a barrel grip. Also like on the Makita, how they've done all their rubber over molding around here, because you can hold this very well, whether you have gloves on or uh, bare handed. Now let's talk about some of the other features. It's a six speed saw. So you see here, one through six, you can dial that in. And then when you hit the power, see that's a lot faster as if I go down to one, a lot slower. Now, also it has no load speed, meaning you see how fast it's going right now. In a moment, when I actually use this to cut, as soon as I start engaging the wood and it senses that, it'll actually speed that cut up. Now, uh, speeds one through six is gonna give you uh, 800 strokes per minute on the low side, all the way up to 3,500 strokes per minute on speed six. You also get four orbit modes, really three orbit modes and a, a non-orbit. So all the way forward is gonna just give you a straight cut up and down. And then, uh, you know, the orbit one, that's gonna give you a, a very mild uh, orbit to the blade and then more medium and then a very coarse or a very, you know, long stroke, if you will, on the orbit. So when you're cutting rougher wood to cut faster, you can put it on that, you know, third orbit there and it's gonna be very, very aggressive. Of course, if you're cutting fine woods, hardwoods, things like that, then you probably want to be on the non-orbit or on the less aggressive, more mild, if you will. Now, this does not come with any kind of type of dust collection. However, this bottom plate comes off and you can get a, a dust collection plate that it pops on there. Also, right here on the back of the tool, you see the Allen wrench and that's going to enable you to quickly, right here with just, just one Allen set screw to loosen that up. And then back here on the back of the tool, you can see on the base plate is mar our markings uh, for zero to 45 degrees on both ways. So then you can set it at 45, tighten that Allen screw back up. And now you're ready to make a, a 45 cut with your jigsaw. Put that, put that Allen, that Allen key back in here and it's ready for the next time you use it. Also, a lot of people will use this, as I was mentioning about coping, when you're doing uh, coping on, uh, whether it be you know, baseboards or even uh, um, 
trim moldings, uh, you name it, makes it a lot easier if you put on a coping foot. So you can easily take that off, put on your coping foot, which looks a lot like this, but you've, I'm sure you've seen a coping foot. And now you can use this as a coping saw, or I can easily put this back on here if I find the nut, put that square nut back in there. Now that we got that back together and on your, when you're at zero degrees, basically it locks in. So not only can you adjust it, but when you get it on that, uh, at zero, then it slides forward and locks into place. And then you know it's there engaged where you're gonna be nice and perpendicular to your, to your surface. And again, I can put my Allen key away and it's ready for the next use. I'm running a two amp hour battery because I like it to be slim and trim, if you will. That also balances the tool out really well. It's not overly heavy. With a five amp hour battery on here, that's a pretty heavy tool. Um, we'll weigh this in just one moment and show you how heavy it is. Uh, you also get toolless blade changes here. So very easy, you'll see here. Should have done this without the, the foot on there and it would have been easier to see. But So I've got a blade. I'm just going to insert it here. Going to Insert it right here and you'll see, all I have to do is shove it in and it locks into place. Now to release this, all I have to do is this plastic lever right here, pop that out. And now that blade's gonna drop right out or I can pull it out. And again, if I wanna put it back in, just push it and it locks into place. Now the kit comes with six blades in it, so it makes it really nice for uh, your wood cutting. Uh, four of these are for wood cutting and two of them are for metal. So out of the box, you can get started cutting as long as you have a battery. Uh, it does not have a blower on it. It also does not have dust collection that it comes with. You can get a dust collection plate where you can connect it to a dust, connect, collect, <laughs> to a dust collector and remove that dust as you're cutting. But as I mentioned, some, uh, some jigsaws do have a blower on board that basically blows that dust out of your cut path. This does not have that. However, it doesn't seem to have a bad habit of leaving that dust in the trail. So let's use this a little bit and see what we think about it. Okay, so again, I'm going to push the power button and I get nothing. However, if I arm it first or unlock it and hit the power button, and again, so I'm on speed six and you see it's going pretty slow. So we'll see here as we engage. Also, as I mentioned, upside down, left-handed. Very easy to use that saw, left-handed, upside down, uh, still able to control that very well. Very little vibration. Only vibration I got is when I let the base kind of rock off, the, uh, off from being uh, totally flat to the surface. But when it's sitting here, many saws will just sit there and jump around when you've got it sitting there running like that. Very, very lack of vibration, if you will even when you're cutting. You can see that just cutting with two fingers.
Then let me give it some orbit here. So that was with no orbit whatsoever. Really cuts effortless, effortless. <laughs> yes, you know what I'm saying. Effortlessly, whatever that word is. Okay, now this is on the most aggressive. Probably see some splintering here. Really not much, but wow, cuts very fast as you can see, but I wanted to watch and see how much dust I actually get in the path. So it does a great job of clearing that path naturally. Uh, so no problem of, of uh, you know, dust covering up your line. It's still gonna use some of that venting uh, to remove that dust. And I am a right-hander, but I'm gonna go at this left-handed. I'll turn my orbit down to one again. really cuts really really well. If there's one thing that stands out across the board when using Makita tools, I would have to say refinement. So they usually always have the power to make the cut, to turn the fastener, to tighten something, loosen something, something drill something, cut something. But they always do it in a more re refined way. I shouldn't say always, we're not supposed to ever use the word always or never. But anyway, most of the time it's just a more refined tool. Whether it's a little smoother, a little less vibration, a little easier to handle, what have you. That's what we found also in this barrel grip jigsaw. It just cut really, really smooth. Very easy to control as you saw when we were making those cuts. I could use two fingers if I needed to to guide this saw. And it's a pretty hefty little saw here. In fact, let's weigh this and see how much it weighs. So, we'll weigh it with the 2 amp hour battery and then without it as we zero out there, so I'll take the battery off. And so we're looking at four pounds, four and a half ounces without the battery. With the battery, and this is a two amp hour battery, five pounds, two ounces. So it's about a five pound tool with a battery, a little more if you're gonna run say a three, four or five amp hour battery, uh, but just over five pounds with that two amp hour battery. Now I mentioned earlier that I like to run it with a, with a smaller battery because it's just, feels a little bit lighter as well as a little bit more balanced. It's very balanced with that two amp hour in there. So I, I really like running it. Runtime, uh, I would say that we made all those cuts that you saw in the video and several more on that two amp hour battery. So you're not gonna get a long run time out of it. So if you're doing tons of cutting, you might want to step up to a larger battery or run, you know, have two different uh, two amp hours that one staying on charge. But it just depends on how many cuts you're doing as to what size battery you need to run. Now price on this, you're looking at $259 for the bare tool. So just the tool and you get six blades with it as well, $259. Now that's not exactly cheap. So if you're just, you know, somebody around the shop that needs a jigsaw from time to time, you might say, you know what, that's just a little steeper than what I want to spend on a jigsaw. Totally understood. However, if you're a finished carpenter, you're a cabinet maker, something like that where you, you're doing a lot more refined cuts, you may say all day long, if I can get something that doesn't have a lot of vibration, gives me a lot of features, gives me a lot of flexibility, I will pay that and it totally makes sense. Your ROI, your return on investment makes more sense when pur purchasing a tool like this. And if nothing else, you just want a better tool. We really like it. Uh, it's definitely gonna be our go-to here in the shop. Uh, just again, how easy it cuts, how smooth it cuts. So check it out. Again, it's the Makita XVJ01Z. 
If you don't mind, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, hit that like and subscribe button, but only if you like this video. If you hated this video, by all means, give us that thumbs down, but would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day, and keep smiling.